Let's learn how to use React Native along with Expo to build cross-platform mobile apps. In my opinion, React Native is one of the best solutions for building native mobile apps using JavaScript. It's the reason I learned React in the first place. Now Expo is a layer on top of React Native, which gives you additional tools and services that give you a similar dev experience to making a typical web app with React. So here's the demo app that we'll be creating throughout the series. It's a very simple version of Twitter where users can read and post tweets to their timeline. So I'm currently logged in as one of the users and you can see the list of tweets here. We have features like pull to refresh. So it will update this list with any fresh data from the server. We have infinite scroll. So if we scroll to the end of the list and there are more tweets, it pulls them from the server and adds it to the list here. We have multiple screens. So if I were to click on one of the tweets, we have this single tweet screen, and we also have a profile screen here where we can see the user's profile along with all of their tweets here. We also have different types of navigators. So if I go back to the main page, you see that we have this home search and notifications, which are not implemented, but you can easily add that functionality here using this type of navigator. It's called a tabbed navigator. And we also have a drawer navigator here and this will let you access multiple screens as well. And of course we can add a new tweet. So if I click this plus button, we can add a tweet here. I even have a character counter here. Let's go ahead and tweet this. And there's a new tweet. We'll also make sure to implement the authentication flow. So let me log out here. It's within my settings page. Let's log out. And I have two auth screens. I have one for login and one for register, which is pretty self-explanatory. Let's go ahead and log in. And we'll take a look at things like global state using context and storing the auth token within our application. So let me just log in and this should bring us back to our app screens. There we go. So fairly simple app, but there's a lot of moving parts. Obviously we'll be making use of React Native and Expo. We saw that the screens were styled nicely. So we'll spend time learning how to do CSS in React Native. There's a bunch of screens that interact with one another and we'll be making use of the popular React navigation library for that. And we'll also be making use of Laravel as a backend API so we can communicate between our front end React Native app and the backend Laravel app. We'll also be making use of Laravel Sanctum for the token based logins. So if you found that interesting, let's go ahead and get started with the Expo installation and getting up and running with simulators and physical devices. So obviously you want to be familiar with React first, and if you're not, be sure to check out the React series we have here on Laracasts. So first thing that you need is the Expo CLI, and you're going to want to install this globally using this command here. So I already have that installed. And once you do, you should have this Expo command here. Let me actually stop the currently running app here. And let me just go back to my home folder. And let's go ahead and make a new folder here. So we'll do Expo init. Expo in it, and we'll say LC Expo test. Okay. And we'll just stick to a blank minimal app. So we'll select blank. Okay, so that's done. Let's go ahead and go into that folder, LC Expo test, and it says run yarn start. But before we do that, if you want to run the simulators, so for iOS, let's go into the documentation here. And for guides, make sure to follow this. So pretty straightforward for iOS. You just want to make sure to install Xcode. And then after you have Xcode installed, make sure you install the Xcode command line tools, which is basically just a setting in the preferences here. After that, you should be able to use the iOS simulator, which allows you to simulate the hardware of different iOS devices like iPhones and iPads. So we'll primarily be making use of the iOS simulator for an iPhone for most of this series. Now, if you want an Android simulator, check out the installation instructions here. It's a bit more involved. You have to use, or you have to install Android Studio Emulator. And then you have to set a bunch of path variables, which you can find in the instructions here. So once you have both simulators running, we should be able to run our Expo app on both of them. And you can also run them on physical devices, which I will show you as well. So let's go ahead and start our project. Actually, let's open it up in VS Code first. And you saw that the start command is yarn start. So if you take a look at package JSON, all it's doing is running the expo command and passing expo start. So you can use whatever you like. Yarn start, expo start, or npm start. So let's go ahead and run that. So let's say yarn start. And you can see it opened up this tab in my browser, which gives you more options. 
you can run it on an iOS simulator, which I want to do. So I'm going to click this button here. You can also run it in the Android simulator, which I also want to do at the same time. So let me start on iOS first. So my previous project was running. So to reload the app, just open up your console and hit R. And that should bring up the new app here after it's finished bundling. Okay, so there's the app in an iPhone. Let's also try it on an Android. Again, you can hit this button here, or you can hit A in the console, which I'll do here. And it looks like there's a new vision, but I'll hit no for now. And here's the default app running on Android on a Pixel 5. So you can also run the app on physical devices. If you go back into the browser, you'll see this QR code here. So you want to download the Expo Go app for iOS and for Android. So once you have that downloaded for Android, just go ahead and open the app, scan the QR code, and then the app will be running in your Android device. So my phone is actually an Android, so I'll do that here. Okay, so now it's running on my actual Android phone. And I don't have an iPhone, but I do have an iPad. So for iOS devices, just download the Expo Go app as well, and then use the camera app to scan the QR code, and then it should run in the Expo Go app. So I'm gonna do that with my iPad here. And now it's running on my iPad as well. So we have the app running in four devices, two simulators and two physical devices. And again, the beauty of Expo is it makes the experience very similar to building a web app. So it has hot module replacement. So if I were to go into the code here, just go into the main app JS and edit this, the hot module replacement should take effect into all devices. So I'm gonna hit save here. And it's pretty quick on all devices, even the physical devices. And it did update without refreshing the app. Actually, let me show you that with one of the simulators here. One more edit. And like I said, it's basically the same for all devices in terms of how long it takes for the reload to happen. And it's pretty quick. I'm gonna stop the video here. In the next video, we'll take a look at the different components available to us within React Native so we can start building out our mobile apps.